we are now discussing about the processing unit. What is going on inside the processor? The processor executes a program which is residing in the main memory by fetching individual instructions into it. The first instruction corresponding to a program is fetched into the processor, kept in the instruction register, decoded, executed, and the results written back. Again, the next instruction is fetched to the instruction register, decoded, executed, and so on. So we can call this as an instruction cycle. Usually, a fetch, decode, execute cycle which the processor follows from the boot up till the shutdown in order to process the instructions of the corresponding program. Also, we have seen that these individual phases such as fetch, decode and execute phases of an instruction cycle actually involves a set of micro operations. And again, at the very basic level or at the lowermost level, these micro operations actually involve a set of data movements, either a data movement from the memory to the register within the processor or a data movement from some register within the processor to the memory or a data movement between the registers within the processor or the data movement between some register and ALU. Otherwise, it is an ALU operation. But these data movements and the ALU operations corresponding to one instruction should be executed in a proper sequence and in a timely manner in order to execute a particular instruction. And these data movements that do in a well sequenced and timely manner are done with the help of the control signals generated by the control unit within the processor. So the processor actually involves a data path involving the register, the internal processor bus and ALU and a control path which actually controls this data path with the help of the control signals generated by the control unit. So everything that happens within the processor and to and from the processor are done with the help of the control signals generated by the control unit. We have already discussed how these control signals generated in this sequence and with proper timing result in the execution of this instruction at R0, location A. But how do the control signals are generated by the control unit for a proper instruction in this proper sequence and in a timely manner? Or what is there inside a control unit that make it capable to generate the control signal in the proper sequence and in a well timely manner? There are two ways of implementing control unit. One is hardwired control unit, other is microprogrammed control unit. As name implies, the hardwired control unit makes use of the hardware to generate the control signal and in microprogrammed control unit, the control signals are generated with the help of the program. So we need a control unit which is capable of generating all the required control signals for our system. If we consider this example, we can see that here the control signals corresponding to this instruction are generated in a series of steps. At step T0, the following signals are generated. And only when the actions corresponding to these signals at T0 are completed, then we should move to the next step at which these signals are generated. When the corresponding actions are over, move to next step and following signals are generated and so on. And let's assume that each of these steps take place within one clock cycle. So the control unit first of all should keep track of the steps involved in the instruction cycle which we can call as the control step. So the control unit should keep track of the control step so that at each step the proper corresponding control signals can be generated. At the same time each step should start at a specific time hence the control unit should keep track of the timing to at proper time for proper ship generate the proper control signals. For this, the control unit make use of one step counter or a sequence counter which is driven by a clock.
The step counter driven by the clock provides the control steps as input to the control unit. Suppose we have a maximum of 16 control steps involved in an instruction cycle. So we shall make use of a 4-bit step counter which counts from 0000 to 1111. And suppose our step counter is connected to positive edge triggered clock. Hence every count or every increment takes place for the rising edge or the positive edge of the clock. Suppose for the first, our first clock cycle, clock 1, the counter value is 0, 0, 0, 0. Then for the next rising edge or for the next positive edge, the counter increments and the value becomes 0, 0, 0, 1. And for the next rising edge, the value becomes 0, 0, 1, 0 and so on. And we assume for us each control step take place within one clock cycle. So we make use of a 4 to 16 bit control step decoder which decode the output of the control step counter to make one among these 16 lines active. When count equals 0000, 0, 0, 0 it makes the output line T0 active. When count is 0, 0, 0, 0001 the decoder makes the output line T1 active and so on. And since it is positive edge triggered, each increment occurs at the positive edges of the clock cycle of the clock. So initially for clock cycle 1, for our clock cycle 1, when count equals 0, 0, 0, 0, the line T0 is active. And at the next rising edge or at the next positive edge, when the count is 0, 0, 0, 1, then the line T1 will be active. The next rising edge or the next positive edge when the counter increments and becomes 0, 0, 1, 0, the line T2 will be active and so on. So when count equals 0, 0, 0, 0, the control step input to the control unit is T0 and now the control unit can recognize that this is the control step T0 and hence it generates the control signals corresponding to T0. And within that clock cycle, all the actions corresponding to control step T0 will be completed. And for the next positive edge, the counter increments, the line T1 will be active. Now the control unit realizes that this is control step T1. And now the control signals corresponding to T1 will be active. And all the actions corresponding to T1 will be completed within this clock cycle. Again, here the counter increments T2 will be active now here the control signals corresponding to t2 will be generated all the actions corresponding to t2 will be completed and so on this is how the control unit generate the control signals in proper sequence and with proper timing now we can see that here the control step t0 t1 and t2 corresponds to fetching the instruction also, during fetching itself, we are incrementing the program counter. These steps are common to all the instructions and after fetching, we need to decode the instruction. This is also common to all the instructions. So, till that, which are the control signals to be generated and at which time, it is already known or it is common to all instructions. But after decoding the instruction, the further control signals depend upon the decoded instruction. So to generate the further control signals, definitely we need the instruction in the instruction register as input to the control unit. So we make use of an instruction decoder which decodes the instruction in the instruction register and accordingly make one of its output lines active depending upon the instruction type or the operands type. Suppose here there are only 8 possible types in our system. We shall keep it simple. For each instruction type, one of these output lines I0 to I7 will be active. So based on the instruction type for the proper control step, the appropriate control signals can be generated by the control unit. For example, in our case for the add instruction at control step T5, the add control signal must be generated. Assume that for the add instruction, line I2 will be active. 
so when line i2 is active and when line t5 is active for instruction add at control step t5 add control signal must be generated so we need a step counter driven by the clock as input to the control unit also the instruction in the instruction register is a required input for the control unit again the condition code flags and the external inputs are also inputs to the control unit. The control signals generated depends upon the condition code flags such as 0 flags, x flags and so on. Also there can be external inputs for memory read and memory write operations. We should wait for the MFC signal, external MFC signal. Only if external MFC signal is generated, we can move to the further steps or we can generate the next control steps so the step counter driven by a clock the instruction register condition code flags and external input are the inputs to the control unit and the control unit makes use of the hardwired control unit makes use of a decoder encoder block which combines all these inputs and generate the appropriate control signals as the output so the hardwired control unit makes use of the hardware or a combinational logic circuit which combines all the inputs and based on the states of all the inputs produce the appropriate control signals. For example, the set in control signal is to be generated at the control step T0 of every instruction and for control step T5 of the add instruction and maybe for some other combination. So, by designing the sudden control signal to be generated at the control step T0 of every instruction and for the add instruction line I2 will be active. When line I2 is active at control step T5 sudden signal to be generated and maybe for some other combination the sudden signal to be generated. And the add signal, add control signal to be generated for line I2 and for control strip T5 and maybe for some other combination. So for every control signal, all the combinations are combined or a logic combinational circuit will be designed. So in short, the hardwired control unit consists of some decoder and coder block which receives some inputs and based on the states of the inputs produce the appropriate control signals as output. Finally, the ENS control signal is used to initialize the step counter to its initial value in order to begin the instruction cycle again for the next instruction. Then the run control signal is used for the MFC signal. While waiting for the MFC signal, we should stop the counter being incremented. For that, we can make run as 1 or run as 0. When run signal is 0, the counter pause or stop incrementing. Only when the external MFC signal is received, the counter should increment and move to the next control step. And the advantage of the hardwired control unit is it is definitely fast and is very much suitable for simple instruction set. And the disadvantage is if some modification is required to add a new instruction type or to add a new control signal or for some other modifications, it requires the rearrangement of wires. Hence, it is not a flexible method. And hence it is used for smaller instruction set or reduced instruction set because more complex the instruction set more complex will be the design also the modification will also become complex.